Hello friends, uh, friends, today we discuss uh, about the tip modifications. How can we modify the tip in a rhinoplasty surgery? Uh, friends, really um, uh, tip is a very uh, complicated topic, especially for my beginner friends. Uh, so uh, for proper understanding uh, of the tip modifications, uh, I think we should have a comprehensive knowledge of the nasal anatomy, uh, tip anatomy and tip dynamics and tip aesthetics, how we analyze the tip. Today we discuss uh, the major uh, techniques. There is so many major techniques for the tip modifications. Uh, we discuss a one of a important technique for the tip modifications. Uh, So uh, these are the tip modification techniques. Uh, in, uh, in in ninety five percent primary uh, cases, primary case uh, that means a case that never operated in the uh, by a surgeon. Secondary case that a case operated by the uh, same surgeon, and the revisions case that by a other. So uh, these four uh, techniques: the columella strut and sepalic trimming, interdomal or intradomal dome sutures, 95% primary deep uh, deformity cases we can correct by this uh, uh, four type of the tip suture techniques. Uh, rest of the 5% cases, uh, either the secondary cases or the multiple tip deformity or the complicated tip deformity cases need some other add-on techniques like the septal extension graft, uh, like the tongue in groove, like the lateral crust, uh, and there are so many other techniques. Uh, friends, especially for my beginner friends, first you identify your comfort zone of a surgery in the rhinoplasty. Uh, if you comfort in a nose, in a tip surgery, then you go for it. You just initially time, you go for the 95% primary cases, not for the secondary or complicated, because once you do the simple cases and uh, uh, if your patient have a happy after the surgery then you boost up your the confidence so we have the four techniques uh, but before to understand the four techniques uh, the important thing first you learn the anatomy of the tip because first you learn the normal anatomy of the nose then you judge about the abnormal anatomy until unless you don't have the normal anatomical knowledge you, how can you identify the abnormal things? So for the identification of the abnormal things, first you learn the normal anatomy of the tip. Uh, friends, uh, tip, uh, the inner frame of the tip, the inner framework of the tip basically formed by a, a cartilage that is the, that we say that LR cartilage and LR cartilage and the caudal septum, caudal part of the septum. So uh, this LR cartilage this cartilaginous part consists by LR cartilage and the caudal part of the septum. And another the bony part of the tip uh, basically by the piriform apertures or the uh, anterior nasal spine. And this inner framework entirely covered by a soft tissue envelope so that have the different subunit like the uh, anti most anterior projecting part that is the tip. On either side of the tip there is uh, free fibrophytic tissues and the ella and the mid part that divide the nose in the, in the two equal symmetrical uh, cavity that is the columella and on either side of the columella and uh, uh, just medial to the ella this is the nostril so this tip have basically the four subunit now this lr cartilage is the basic uh, structure of the inner framework of the tip so this lr cartilage have the three part uh, basically, this most medial part, this most medial part of this LR cartilage that is the uh, medial crust. The most lateral part that is the widest part of LR cartilage that is the lateral crust and the part that connect these two cartilage in its part, lateral crust and the medial crust, that is the intermediate crust. 
or the middle crust there are so many books mention the middle crust or the intermediate crust so i think you should know each and about the uh, all parts of the uh, different parts of uh, this lr cartilage so if we just discuss one by one friends uh, first the middle crust basically this is the middle crust so this middle crust is a basically primary component of the cordomen and uh, it act as a pillar on which the tip rest so this middle crust have the two part one is the columellar part and another is the foot plate part so this medial uh, crust have the two part and you know it forms a one of a major tip support mechanism because and uh, the tip have three major tip support mechanism one is the size shape and resilience of this entire lr cartilage and second the attachment of the caudal septum with the, this medial crust and third that is the scroll area when we discuss the lateral crust then uh, we see that things so the important thing regarding this uh, medial crust basically this foot plate part of this medial crust this foot plate part of the medial crust basically rest on the fatty tissue on the anterior nasal spines uh, if you look in this video uh, this foot plate this part of the foot plate area basically rest on this anterior nasal spines fatty tissues sometimes what happened in the advancing age or sometimes uh, in uh, during the surgery or the infection due to the trauma the fatty tissue get may reabsorbed and the patient consequently droop the tip trophy so uh, these are the significance of this medial crust and it's really a important part because uh, when we make a incision then we incision make on this uh, Uh, skin of the uh, medial crust part uh, another important thing if you want make the strength of the tip then we use uh, uh, modify by the medial crust strength by the septal extension graft or the columella strut so this is about the medial crust part uh, na- next important part second part of the uh, lar cartilage that is the intermediate crust or the middle crust so this intermediate crust have the two part this is the domal part and another is the lobular part this is the domal segment and this is the lobular part so it's a important part of the lr cartilage because the external appearance of the tip is depend on the angulation of this domal part and the distance between these two domal part and the soft tissue thickness on this dome part so is particularly uh, uh, understand the thing that the appearance is totally dependent on this part either the angulation of the dome either the distance between the two dome and the soft tissue envelope and uh, thickness about the so uh, if you want to decrease the width of the tip if you want to increase the definition of the tip then we deal by this part of the uh, lateral crust but if you want to increase the strength if you want to increase the length then we deal basically by the medial crust or both of these part so these are about the so this part of the medial crust a middle crust we can modify by the dome suture either the dome creating suture or either the interdomal suture uh, so this uh, all about in the brief by the intermediate crust now the last part the last part of the uh, uh, basically lr cartilage that is the uh, lateral crust you know lateral crust is the widest part of the lr cartilage so it gives maximum volume to the tip and the basically the volume of the tip is dependent on the lr cartilage uh, lateral crust part of the lr cartilage so look that this lr cartilage have the two margin this is the cephalic margin of the lr and this is the caudal margin of the lr cartilage okay for this lr cartilage uh, two things are the important first the orientation of this lr cartilage uh, the orientation of the lr cartilage this is the medial end of the lr cartilage this is the lateral end of the lr cartilage uh, so 
this lateral end of the lateral cusp part of the LR cartilage is basically oriented towards the lateral canthus. Around we can say at the 45 degree angle from the mid part. Sometimes this lateral crust have the orientation deformity. Rather than 45 degree or rather than uh, orientation towards the lateral canthus, he oriented medially towards the medial canthus or angle around the 30 degree. That is that is the uh, basically uh, orientation deformity or we can say that is the cephalic malposition of the lateral crust. And the appearance of the tip is changed that we, uh, we call that parenthesis deformity. So this is a deformity. When the change the orientation of this lateral crust, it's also a deformity because the, at that the, the patient um, developed the external and nasal wall insufficiency and there is a lot of other problem because we lost the support of the LRM. And another thing important, uh, look the, the contour of the lateral crust. You know, the contour of the lateral crust towards lateral is convex. Sometimes what happened, rather than the convex, the contour of lateral crust is like convex. So, the patient develop a patient develop a, a depression on the both sides of the LR. So, what's the name of that deformity? That is the paradoxically curved LR cartilage, paradoxically curved lateral crust. So, if lateral crust have a configurations or uh, the contour deformity, both create the tip problem. So, we correct that by a, a lateral curve flip technique and later we see that things. So, uh, these two basically deformities, uh, parenthesis deformity and paradoxical lateral curve deformity by this. Now, the other important thing, look that this is the cephalic margin of the lateral. It's also a one of tip support mechanism uh, because the attachment in this area, the cephalic part of the uh, lateral crust and lower part of the upper lateral cartilage have the like this have a anastomosis, have the attachment like in this configuration, this one. So this we uh, the name of this that is the scroll area. So this is the scroll area. So it's also a one of a major tip support mechanism. So tip have the three important tip support mechanism. One is basically uh, size shape and resilience of this entire LR cartilage. Second, this attachment. And third, this is the scroll area. And this part, this caudal margin of the lateral crust is also an important landmark for the marginal incision in a open approach. It's uh, important for the open approach because we, we when we make the incision, we place an incision uh, along the margin of the lateral crust, we identify the margin of. So these all about brief in the uh, lateral crust and other important thing because it's uh, provide the maximum volume. So if you want to reduce the volume of the tip, then in which part you deal? We deal with the lateral crust. How we can uh, excise this part? We can preserve at least 6 to 8 mm uh, in your Indian scenario and we excise uh, this cephalic part. So this is called the cephalic trimming. So these are the different part uh, uh, of a LR cartilage, I think, um, uh, especially uh, my beginner friends then at least this is minimum anatomy this minimum anatomy do different parts what exact configurations and when you examine your patient uh, then I, I think you should have uh, in your idea in your mind then the patient have in which part the deformity and once you open the nose then you check it you confirm confirm it so you develop a sense of the deformity. Then you explain to the patient about the prognosis of the surgery. So, uh, at least when you examine the patient, then you identify that either the patient have a uh, large volumetic tip or uh, basically have a depressed tip, uh, toptic tip. So, these all are the important thing. Because, for example, um, this 
attachment of this medial crust and the caudal septum have a specific configuration ideally this caudal part of the septum that uh, basically 2 to 4 mm between inside of this both of the medial crust but if more than this then this is the over projected columella and the less than this that is the hanging columella so you develop the sixth sense that what patient deformity how can i correct so these all about the uh, part of lr cartilage so today we discuss only the one technique then uh, the cephalic uh, basically uh, columella strut so what is the columella strut where we use what is the purpose of the columella strut friends the purpose of the columella strut that is the we just need for the tip stability when we need the tip projections and just to make a good columella shape these are the purpose of because whenever you use the any technique then you learn what is the purpose of this because in rhinoplasty uh, friends there is no single technique by which uh, and there is a no rule that in each and every case you do all the techniques you analyze your patient and according to that you use the technique like columella strut whenever you use then you have think you have the uh, idea in your mind that these are the purpose so uh, what is the ideally length uh, ideally length ideally length for the columella strut uh, because later uh, when we see the technique then first step the shaping so ideally length of the columella strut is the 20 millimeter long and 2.5 mm width and 1 mm uh, thickness so these all criteria for the dimension the vomer septal cartilage part because its rigidity and thickness is the same so this is the ideal part of the uh, columella strut uh, then the th uh, the techniques uh, whenever you use the any technique then first you have the basic step in your mind so for the columella strut we have the three step in the first step we make the ideal shape we already discussed shape that the length 20 millimeter width 2.5 and the thickness is 1 mm 1 to 1 5 mm first you make the ideal uh, shaping then the insertion so for the insertion uh, we create basically a pocket uh, on the anterior nasal spine and then we insert and the third is the suture fixations so suture fixations how we fix the suture because once you create the pocket then you put this columella strut and then the first suture the first suture is important when you place the first suture then you place it just below the dome uh, area uh, and fix it by a uh, needle or 50 PDS suture. So now we learn then how can we use this columella strut. So look that first we make the ideal shape. This is the warmer part of the septal cartilage. So if you uh, basically identify it, <clears throat> then this is around my that two uh, I think uh, two centimeter or you can say that. Uh, So this is my letter uh, columella strut part. Now, first step I complete. Then the second step, you hold uh, both of the medial crust. You hold the both of the medial crust. You hold the medial crust by the two Takahashi forceps like this cartilage holding forceps and give the counter pre uh, pressure superiorly like this. And you just take a sharp seizure hold the sharp suture like this and you make the uh, groove for the insertion look that like this spread it spread it but remember no touch directly to the anterior nasal spine you left little bit tissue otherwise the this part of the crust is clicking then after making the groove, you mark between the mid exact mid part of the strut. It's a very good technique for my beginner friends that exact at the mid of the uh, um, strut. And until unless you mark the mark part that at the lowest part that insert in the uh, 
uh, grew. So ideally, uh, first you measure it, make a groove and mark between the mid part of the strut and then hold it and you put in the suture. It's a unedited video. So I think by unedited video, you, you, can, you can learn better. For the learning purpose, the unedited videos is the best. Uh, because in unedited videos, you can see that what exactly by the bigness you have the mistakes in the early period in the journey of the rhinoplasty. So look that if we put it uh, like this, then first the, the upper part of this node beyond the dome area, the top part of the stud node beyond the dome area. So look that you pass a needle from one side to another for fixation of this columella strut. Okay. Look that. Uh, if like you fix in this way, uh, is it correct? No, it is not a correct method. Because if you look the direction of the needle is not straight. The direction of the needles look like this. So if you fix in this way, then definitely your tip is diabetes. So it's a very important when you put the needle, look that. It's a very important thing. So, because the needle is not straight, so you remove it again and the exit and the entry of the uh, needle is the same plane. My friends, in rhinoplasty, each and everything is important. In your rhinoplasty uh, journey, that the things, that there is a minor things that make the result uh, change. So each and everything are the important. The needle like this, this is not exactly in the right way. So we change it. Uh, the exit and entry from one side to the contralateral side, that is the same plane. Look the difference. This is the right way. The entry and exit of the uh, needle is the same plane. This is the exact right way. So once you place it, then you fix it uh, by a uh, 50 PDS suture. Remember, for fixation, you use the 50 PDS suture. Ideally, we use for strut fixation the 50 PDS suture. Sometimes, if you, your strut is from the uh, rib cartilage uh, or is strong, then you can use 40. But ideally, you should use for fixation the 50 PDS suture. So, by the 50 PDS suture, you pass from the one side of the medial crust, from the one side of the medial crust, then start again medial crust and the same is basically uh, medial crust, strut and the margin of the medial crust is say, uh, uh, basically vertical mattress suture. So by vertical mattress suture, you fix the node. The important thing, how you fix the node, you, you, your insertion exit on the margin of the medial crust not through the skin because if your suture is through the skin to skin what happened later the patient create the new and he uh, asked you doctor i feel something in my side the nose so if your node that is uh, just on the margin that 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 is the height by this columella flap so ideally you uh, make uh, i think the uh, three sutures and when you place the suture then look that the important thing uh, is very important. Look that how I fix the node. When you fix the node, not like this. In horizontal plane, it's the wrong. You along the longitudinal axis of the columella like this. This is the right way. And at least you should wait for 20 seconds for the just uh, proper uh, transmission of the force of the node. Otherwise, and you use the two nodes, two nodes three times. So this is the right way. This is the right way. Uh, you use the three sutures for the fixations. And uh, remember friends, in each and every case in open rhinoplasty, either the patient need or not the augmentation, uh, tip projections. Whenever we use, it's a common thing, you clear the bigness that 
whenever we open the uh, nodes in open rhinoplasty that it's not necessary that uh, we use the columella instead for the projection of the teeth because itself the open approach have some disadvantage because we uh, open the medial crust that it lost the some minor tip support mechanism so for making a unified tip or gain that uh, these minor tip support mechanism we use the columella strut there are some in my fellow uh, they frequently ask sir this patient there is no need to the projection why we use the columella strut so whenever we open then we always just to gain regain the support you always use the columella strut up now if you want like the projections of the teeth then by the different other method you can um, increase the length of the columella strut and uh, by the uh, lateral crest it you increase the projections but uh, you always use the columella strut it's a basic part of the tip surgery like uh, in the next videos we discuss about the uh, cephalic trimming when we need the reduce the uh, size of the tip or how can we a uh, more defined tip or reduce the tip so but this is the basic step of a tip surgery so friends uh, i think this um, uh, all columella uh, uh, strut information is useful for you and in the next video we discuss about the rest of the technique like the cephalic trimming and the dome supra thank you